Thank you for making Lockdown Spartans your first listen every single day here in the Lockdown Podcast Network. Free and available where you find folks get your podcast. Also, this episode of Locked on Spartans is brought to you by Stat Hero. Stat Hero is reshaping the way that you play fantasy sports. Dozens of house based games to play daily. No sharks, no funky props, just your skill versus the lineups you choose. Sign up today at stathero.com. On today's episode, Gabe Brown, Marcus Bingham, they're out of here. We also see if we want to readjust our transfer portal expectations. And then after, hmm. Should that be Michigan State in the Final Four instead of Duke? Hmm. Let's go. Our Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Spartans Nation, how on earth are we doing? Thank you so much for starting your week with this year podcast, talking about your Michigan State Spartans five days a week here on the Locked on Podcast Network. I'm your host, Matt Sheehan, and if you missed it, uh, yeah, it's okay. Like, it's an announcement. I want to call it a big announcement, but I don't really know how much it changes your life. But yes, this podcast is now on YouTube. That's right. If you want to see what my Sunday's best looks like as I'm recording on a Sunday uh, in my zip up hoodie and backwards hat glory. Hey, maybe you just want to watch me talk about Michigan State sports. Awesome. Hey, we're on YouTube. Hop on. Locked on Spartans. Subscribe. If you don't, if you want to stay as far away from my face as humanly possible, first of all, I get it. Totally understandable. Second of all, hey, feel free to do so. We are on you know all the normal podcasting platforms that we always have been. So before we get to the news of Gabe Brown, Marcus Bingham saying goodbye to the Michigan State basketball program. Just two quick things, and you already know what's going to happen. First, I need to ask you to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast, wherever you get your podcast or your favorite YouTube channels. And second of all, hey, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, if, if you recommend something to hang on my wall behind me over my shoulder, if you're still listening on the podcast, uh, hey, hit me up, lockonspartans at gmail.com. All right, enough of wasting that time. Let's get right to it. We got some, okay, it's big news. It's big news, but I'm not going to call it surprising news whatsoever. Um, this is something that we've kind of figured was going to happen for quite some time, and that is that Marcus Bingham and Gabe Brown are not going to be using their COVID year of eligibility to come back to Michigan State next year. They're out of here. Uh, it was reported over the weekend by Mike Laquette of WZZM Grand Rapids. He was the first to report that Marcus Bingham is gone. He's out of here. Okay. And then, uh, actually before that, uh, Jonathan Giovanni, I think I'm saying that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. Jonathan Giovanni of Draft Express, uh, he reported on Twitter that Gabe Brown is gone as well. Both have been confirmed by Michigan State's side. Uh, you know, per the free press, Chris Solari reached out and been like, hey, are these guys really gone? And they said yes. So while there's been no formal, uh, formal Twitter announcement or Instagram post from the Michigan State side, it's been confirmed that they're gone. And again, like I said, and I don't think I'm coming off as like a know-it-all here, but th this isn't a surprise. I think the writing was on a wall for a very long time and it's now official. Now, whether either get drafted in the NBA, who's to say? I, maybe Gabe Brown, a little better shot. Some mock drafts have him amongst like the last 10 picks in the second round. But regardless, professional basketball is professional basketball. And also, and we'll get to this later in the segment, that it, it's probably time to go. It's time to go. It, it's okay. You, you spent your four years here. It's time to try new things. I, college isn't for everyone forever. So it's, it's time for Gabe Brown. I'm Marcus Bingham, to say goodbye. And we will start with talking about Gabe Brown, who in his senior season, which was obviously last year, ended as a third-team All-Big Ten honoree. Not too shabby. Uh, he averaged 11.6 points in his senior year. And for the career, 37% from long range. One of the best free throw shooters this program has ever seen. 89.6%. I struggle to even think of a time he missed a free throw, to be honest. And uh, hey, this is this was a four years that it kind of sucked to see fly by because man, I feel like it's just yesterday that 
Gabe Brown was just that, you know, quirky guy on the bench, uh, hyping people up. You know, he wasn't a walk-on by any means. He was still a solid recruit. But, yeah, that's how he started. Some bench energy. And then, oh, my goodness, like 15 points against LSU in the Sweet 16. Come on, freshman. Go on with your bad self. But it's it's scary how fast time flies by, isn't it? Uh, because, hey, here he is after four years. That was his last year. And a, a good end to his season. Was it all? rainbows and sunshine and butterflies his entire senior year no of course it wasn't like it, it, the better part of what january uh the early part of february kind of left a little bit to be desired but this was a role that gabe brown had that was a lot more than probably he was ever expected for right like he was the senior captain this year a lot of the load is going to be on his shoulders and this is from a former 101 ranked recruit, a three and D guy. And he was asked to do a lot kind of faltered in the middle of the season, but however, it's nice to see that he went out with a good end to the season. Eight of his last nine games ended in double figures. That one game in that patch that did not end in double figures. That was him putting Johnny Davis in a coffin uh, in the big 10 tournament quarterfinal. So yeah, okay, you had four points against Wisconsin. Oh, no, not a good game. No, he still had a really good game there, uh, locking up future lottery pick Johnny Davis. So, yeah, really strong end to the season. For Gabe Brown, sad to see him go, but, hey, happy to see him. And on a high note, and also, hey, again, it, it wasn't just, you know, the last three, four weeks of the season that were good for him. He also had some really important moments, too, during the season, like 16 points against UConn down in the Bahamas. Now, we don't really talk about these kind of games a lot, but a non-conference game against High Point. I don't know if you remember the way I do, but that was a scary game for a lot of it. And Gabe Brown had 24 points to really push his team to the finish line there. You lose that game. Oh, my. Uh, yikes. Uh, and also, another game that, yay, we're not going to remember this one for a very long time, but this is a great Gabe Brown game. 20 points against Northwestern on the road in Evanston. He doesn't have that performance. He doesn't shut the door against the Wildcats. Again, I, I don't know if we're talking about his career ending in the NCAA tournament. So that would have been tough to, to drop those games and hope that you still get a good seed or are even in the tournament in the first place. Uh, Marcus Bingham, same issue. Good career, but – and we'll get to this in, in just a hot second. Just let me – uh. Seen the laurels of Marcus Bingham. All-time blocks leader at Michigan State with 168 blocks. That's a lot. Um, yeah, that's – God, that's that's really – God, that's that's more than people have me blocked on Twitter probably. Um, double doubles against Maryland, 10 this season. Against Wisconsin, 10 this season. And against Duke down that stretch, just like Gabe Brown, up and down his entire senior year. And let's be honest, like this is probably the end of one of the most fascinating careers at Michigan State. And the dynamic between him and Izzo, right? Because Marcus Bingham, uh, he had a lot of tools. And still, a lot of games where it's like, well, why didn't he play 20 minutes? And we'll never know, maybe. I, it's probably safe to say that there was maybe a, a difference there. Like, okay, well, I don't think Marcus is buying it enough. Or maybe he's not doing the things that I want him to do. Or, quite simply put, conditioning not there. Regardless, the end of the season, Solid, solid finish. He ends up uh, scoring just a tick over nine points per game, a tick over six rebounds per game. And it's the age-old question here uh, at the end of a senior season that yeah, I just want to banter about for a hot second is, did these guys fill their potential at Michigan State? How will we look at these guys' careers going forward? And I think it's safe to say that good, solid, decent, pretty, pretty good. Like both of them had some flashes, like, you know, not necessarily key players in final four years, but then again, Gabe did have that LSU game. Do they win that without his 15 points? Uh, Marcus had some great flashes on both sides of the ball, whether it be offense, being able to space out the floor with his three point potential, or also just being a monster inside the paint. They also had a lot of responsibility this year. Marcus comes in here. We're going to go back. They're going to dial the clock back a little bit. The 66th ranked recruit. And I think one thing in hindsight that was maybe not unfair, but I think unfortunate is the word I want to use, is that he was billed as the next Adrian Payne. And that is massive, literally and figuratively, massive shoes to fill. 
because we remember Payne just being this world beater, right? Uh, unconscious from pointer, great defender. And did we get Adrian Payne? Not necessarily, but we got Adrian Payne light. So as a former 66th ranked recruit, who was pretty raw when he came to Michigan State, he was only playing basketball for a few years before he came to East Lansing. Kind of? Gabe Brown, too. He was ranked outside the top 100. 3 and D guy. Energy off the bench. And now, as a senior, he was shouldered, like I said earlier, with a lot of responsibility. Did he fill his potential? Probably. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, is it fair to these guys that maybe the roster wasn't constructed the way that we would hope this year? Who knows? But I think that's a good point, too. And this is why that, hey, maybe it just makes sense for both parties to leave. Could they have come back next year? Of course they could have. Was it time to go? Maybe. Hey, I'm not in Gabe and Marx's head. I, I don't know how they feel. Obviously, they feel like they should leave. And that's no problem because this was a long four years. Four years alone is probably a long time in Michigan State's program. And also, when you add in the whole COVID year thing where you are playing under uh, conditions that probably aren't what you really thought you were going to get when you came to college. You're pretty much just concealed in your dorm or the practice gym or Breslin Center playing in front of no fans. Like, I'm sure that year felt like three years to these guys. And again, you play for a program as intense as Michigan State with Tom Izzo. Like, yeah, that's that's four years that could age you probably pretty rapidly <laughs> like a president. Now, let's say they want to come back next year. I guess why? Because uh, did Marcus reach his top ceiling? Maybe. Did Gabe? Maybe. I just don't know how better they would have gotten next year. And when you're that old too, what's the NBA draft prospect like? So I think it's time for both parties to go. On Gabe's part, on Marx's part, wish them obviously nothing but the best. But on the MSU side, hey, it's, it's also, this is probably the final chapters of that 2018 class that we've talked a lot about that, okay, that part of the program is gone. Now it's time for AJ Hogard to step up and make this his team. It's time for Jaden Aikens to make it his team. It's time for Max Chris to make it his team. So it's another chapter starting in Michigan State's program. I think this is the end of that chapter. And whether that was a, a great chapter, a horrible chapter, that's up for you to decide. I think it was fine. I think it was a fine chapter. Fine. 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 I don't think that's unfair. Now, where does MSU go from here with two scholarships open? Well, <laughs> I'm glad you, well, uh, you probably didn't ask, but hey, we're going to answer that question uh, regardless. Anyway, coming up in a hot segment, I just got to talk to you fine folks about Stat Hero. That's right. Give me a minute to put the little fun graphic up on YouTube. That's right. If you want to watch on YouTube. Ooh, how nice does that look? All right, guys. Stat Hero. Um, God, goodness gracious. My bracket is, it's even worse than I ever imagined it could be, to be honest. But Stat Hero's NCAA single game pickums are pitting the star players against each other in an amazing hybrid between fantasy and sports gambling. Take control back from those handicappers that always seem to have the advantage and start focusing on the players that you know best with a gameplay that does not rely on big spreads, law nods, or funky props. Stat Hero gives you the advantage resulting in their gamers winning four times more often. Why? It's because Stat Hero eliminates all the mystery about who or what you're going up against. In addition to their pick'em games, they have like dozens of lineups that you could just comb through, and then you take on head-to-head. They post their set of players. You pick your set of players. It's easy, it's fast, and it's the best way to get your sports action fixed. And with the simple, sleek gameplay, got you playing in minutes. Just quite simply, the way Daily Fantasy was meant to be. So sign up for free right now. StatHero.com slash LockedOn. And use promo code LockedOn for a 100% match. That's StatHero.com slash LockedOn. Promo code lockdown for a 100% match. One more time, stathero.com slash lockdown. Promo code lockdown. Terms and conditions apply. And before getting back to the action here and just talking about the transfer portal, I just want to thank you for making Lockdown Spartans your first listen every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. And again, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you. If you're not watching on YouTube, Still, thank you for listening, but hey, if if you want to, come step in my office with uh, a jersey on a plastic hanger behind me. Thank you, Kyle Arns. Uh, a painting of Izzo and then a flag signed by all the members of the MSU basketball team circa 2010 to 2014 when I was a student there. So that's, that's all the good stuff you're missing. If, uh, you're not watching on YouTube, so buckle in for that. All right, guys. We got players leaving. Gabe Brown, Marcus Bingham. Now, of course... The next guy that has to make his announcement 
is Joey Hauser. Do I suspect he will leave? Yeah. Am I saying it's 100%? No. For, from what I know, it's probably 84.3% gone from everything that I've heard from the people I know that really know stuff. That's kind of where it sits right now. Most likely gone, but is it a sure thing? No. Right now, though, Michigan State has two scholarships they can use in the transfer portal. Now, Justin Thind of 24-7 Sports, great insider. He does fantastic work here. He even says if Joey Hauser does leave and has three scholarships over for Michigan State, that MSU will bank one of them and still only use two scholarships. So this is how it's going to go. And I know what you're thinking because it's what I'm thinking. It's what your other Spartan friends think. And it's what your Spartan family members think. And it's what your Spartan dog's thinking. This team really could use some big men uh, in the front court there. Really in the paint. Because right now your bigs are Mati Sissoko, Julius Marble. Is that the end of the world? No. But I don't think we can kid ourselves in being like, oh, yeah, that's a comfortable spot. I feel pretty good right there. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Uh, no, I... I, I think that we could use some help in the center position. And if not that too, well, here's what your fours are looking like right now. Malik Hall, Pierre Brooks, and freshman incomer Jackson Kohler. Who, great offensive game, but will his defense be up to snuff immediately that quick in Big Ten play? Probably not. So right now, it's clear that you want some bigs in the transfer portal. And it's so easy to say, like, oh, well, Izzo's just going to get, like, a center. He's going to get two centers, or he's going to get, you know, a power forward and a center. And then it's uh, you actually start to look at the portal, don't you? You actually start to see what's going on, which in the paint is not a lot. Not a lot's going on in the transfer portal right now. And there's, okay, there's a lot of time left. You know, the, the offseason is just starting, but right now – your top center is Fardaz Amak out, out of Utah Valley. Now, guy's great. He averaged a double-double at Utah Valley. Okay, again, at, at Utah Valley. And no disrespect to Utah Valley. I'm sure it's a beautiful valley. But, okay, he's got over 40 colleges reaching out to him. Everyone. Everyone is flocking to this kid. And he's a decent center. It's crazy, though, because that's pretty much the only guy – that is worth looking at. I start to wonder, what is this transfer portal going to look like when, I don't know, only another handful of centers go in? A lot of programs have demand for a center. This is like, and this might be a little crass, but hey, you know, it's, it's Sunday. I've had a good weekend. I'm feeling loose. It's 1.56 in the morning at Rick's. Uh, we got a lot of people that are looking to, uh, you know, just take someone outside of Rick's and, uh, oh, hey, you're a, decent looking individual you're gonna have a lot of people coming your way aren't you uh, that's what being a halfway decent center is starting to look like now in the transfer portal uh because what i'm trying to say is that there's no guarantee that michigan state even gets a center let's say only a handful left jump in the portal that are even worth giving a look at okay you're gonna have dozens and dozens of programs to compete against yes i know michigan state listen i think as highly as michigan state as anyone from a program expectation but still Sometimes like the fit just doesn't work or you're not looking uh, at the right culture or whatever. It's, it's, it's going to be tough to land a center. So it's not a given. What I want to say is that, yeah, I'm going to fill up this big cup of water here. That's not that big. This medium sized cup of water here and probably splash it on our faces and be like, there's no guarantee that a center comes here next year from the portal. It might just be Monty Sissoko, Julius Marble, if this is the way it's going to be. Now I think Michigan state knows that as well. And listen, I, I think this season also showed too that sometimes you are going to see lineups without a true center in the lineup. So ask Villanova how that worked for them this year. No, I know that that's a very strong and extreme comparison to make, but hey, it is the season. Uh, they're off to the final four. Might as well just throw that out there. Um, we have seen lineups this year with Hauser as the five, with Hall a little bit as the five. And I think that could be what we're starting to see next season is that maybe we do get a little used to the idea of some small ball heavy lineups. I think another great example of that too is who Michigan State has reached out to in the portal. Jalen Bridges, who will be a redshirt sophomore next year outside of West Virginia. Six foot seven, a versatile kid, but can play the three or the four. This is very far from a true center. And even for a four, maybe a nudge undersized but yeah that's the kind of guys that we're looking at so you know let me humor you right now is 
say we're next season, it's just Sissoko, it's just Marble. That those are you didn't get anyone in the portal. This is what you are looking at, ideally, like when Sissoko and Marble are on the bench. You got Hall at the five. Uh, you got let's use Bridges. Let, let's say they do land Bridges. I mean, he's very fortunate lands Bridges or a Bridges type player. Okay, so Hall at the five, Bridges at the four, Christie at the three, Walker at the two, Hogarth at the one. I, I think that's a reality that we're probably closer to seeing than we're not with the intense demand for centers in the portal right now. Or let's say that you don't get Bridges. Let's say for some crazy reason you don't get any transfers. And that would not be good, but let's just talk about it. Uh, Hall at the five, Pierre Brooks at the four, Max Christie at the three, Aikens at the two, Hogarth at the one. You can plug and play with that all you want. But yeah, I think I think small ball might be in the future for Michigan State a little bit more next year than it even already was this year because Bingham's out of the fold. Hauser's out of the fold, so that slides up Malik Hall. So yeah, it's... Uh, these are exciting times, kind of stressful times in East Lansing. Can't lie to you, but uh, yeah, I just I'd be remiss if I would just look at the transfer portal, seeing everyone available, and being like, "Oh yeah, they're hundred percent going to get a center." Like, eh, it's going to be a battle. I'm not writing it off, but it's going to be a battle. And in the off season, it what better time to just start throwing around every hypothetical situation as possible? And right now, it I don't know seemed to make sense to me, didn't it? Oh man, I left the stat hero graphic up the entire one. Okay, but hey, you know what? We're going to talk a little bit about, wait, Duke's in the final four. MSU kind of sort of almost beat Duke. Should MSU be in the final four? And other lessons that we learned here on the other side of this short little break. But I just got to talk to you fine folks about Built Bar. That's right. We've been talking about Built Bar forever, for as probably as long as you've been listening to this podcast, to be honest, and for a great reason. Now, right here in front of me, it says, uh, yeah, it's as good as a candy bar. No, I'm going to shoot you straight because I care about you and I love you. Built Bar tastes better than a lot of candy bars that you're eating. They definitely taste better than any protein bar you're eating because they're soft, they're chewy, they're wrapped in 100% real chocolate, and they actually taste like what is written on the package. It's not like you're biting into your old protein bar. Oh my God, there's chalk everywhere. What on earth am I eating? This says chocolate mega power crunch. Like, no, no, no. Built Bar's got you taken care of. Whether it be their Built Puffs, the first ever protein-infused marshmallow, which is delightful. Or mint brownie, peanut butter brownie, uh, almond coconut. They got so many flavors. Go on Built.com. Look at them all. Now, what do they do for your body? Like, listen, what they do for the taste buds is great. But for your body, each Built Bar contains, most Built Bars contain, 130 calories, just four grams of sugar, just four grams of net carbs, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. They will get you through whatever it is. So go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and get 15% off your order. One more time, let's use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. All righty. We, we watch what happened over the weekend. Um, the story that everyone wants to see of Coach K making it to the Final Four, woohoo, is is happening, and he's probably going to go to the National Championship, and it, we're, listen, we're all going to be sad. Now, gotten a few, just a few people, not, not a lot, not an overwhelming amount, but a few whispers of, hmm, Michigan State was up five with five minutes to go against Duke. Wow. Get, should I be thinking that that's Michigan State? spot in the final four were they that close to a final four and well i'm here to talk about it because i'm a podcast host and it's literally what i do so we're gonna get a little uh into that right now my short answer is no no that's not how i'm looking at this i'm not gonna be watching duke on saturday and just thinking that those bastards that should be msu because listen i get it I took the loss as hard as anyone. I'm still a little upset by it. Not upset, but maybe just sad. Depressed. Uh, despondent, if you will. Um, but I don't think that that was necessarily like a super big choke on Michigan State's part. You know, like, Duke's good. Duke's really good. And when you score 20 points in the last five minutes of a basketball game, a lot of that is just how good you are with your NBA level players instead of, well, how much the other team completely melted down. Could Michigan state have done some things to stop the bleeding for Duke? Yeah, sure. But 
at the end of the day, there was still a pretty wide margin at the end. And also, also, now this might upset some people too, because, hey, the wounds from 2019 are still open for some, but I also think that Michigan State doesn't get by Texas Tech in the next round necessarily either. Duke won by, well, the same thing they did against Michigan State. They said, oh, oh, we have NBA players. That's right, guys. Hey, let's just go make every single shot that we ever shoot in the last five minutes. The last five minutes and 38 seconds against Texas Tech for Duke, 17 points. Like, it, sometimes, like, a team's just really good with really good talent and is unstoppable. And also, Texas Tech and their number one rated defense – Got a hard time believing Michigan State cracks the code there and gets by the Red Raiders. So, and I swear I'm not doing this as a coping mechanism to just try to convince myself that Michigan State isn't in the Final Four. Like, no, when when I, I will be honest, when I think that Michigan State could be plugged in in another team's spot. Like, a great example is that everyone talks about what title got away, right? Like, oh, 2019 was Izzo's second one on the platter. Like, or uh, 2010, what that was for him. The one that will always bother me is 2014 against UConn, and that was kind of meltdown-y, but also UConn just being good with Shabazz Napier and his, and his little head fakes that he did to get on the free throw line as much as possible. But, no, that's a year where I believe that, yeah, that could have been Michigan State in UConn's spot, and, yeah, they absolutely would have won a title that year. So, no, I'm not saying that, oh, yeah, Duke's in the Final Four and every Michigan State just to trick my brain in thinking that. Like, no, that's, that's something I do believe. So hopefully that – Give some solace, some, but hey, if it doesn't, then I'm sorry. I tried. Um, so we learned a lot this March Madness, didn't we? Um, I, I, I did get some things right. I, like I, I had Duke in my final four, as sick as it made me. I, I, I got that right. Uh, there was another thing I got right, and that was uh, never put a uh, team from the Mountain time zone or Pacific time zone uh, going far. I, I didn't have any of them in my Elite Eight. And that ended up going well. Also got a lot of things wrong. Also got a lot of things wrong. And let's just talk about the biggest elephant in the room is uh, that's to never, ever, ever trust the Big Ten in a tournament ever, 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 unless MSU is good. And this is a conversation we actually had a few weeks ago with Mark Titus of Titus and Tate. Super thrilled to have him on the podcast. And he brought up a point. And even at the end, I was like, for as big of a Spartan slappy as I am, I'm kind of like, oh, that's it. okay. I don't know if I 100% agree with that. But he said that the Big Ten's best chance every single year to get a national title or go to a Final Four is just the years when Michigan State's good. And, oh, boy, wow, was this a sterling example of all that? Because, uh, listen, you get big, bad Illinois who just – I mean, yeah, I'm sorry, but like they, a lot of they remind me a lot about how Michigan football used to be, and in some ways still kind of are. But where they have a good team, but instead of focusing on the cells or anything, they just want to whine about everything and look for a boogeyman as to why they're not getting things done, and always look outward, and also think that the D Brown era was five years ago and not like closer to 25 years ago at this point. And they get to the tournament, and then oh. Oh, we got absolutely punked again by a mid-major school. Okay, well, yeah, maybe if you just focus on yourselves a little bit and, I don't know, have a reality check and understand who you are and what you need to do, maybe that'll help you. Uh, Purdue was the biggest joke. Um, I, I, I'm i done taking them seriously as a program for a very long time. Uh, this was arguably their most talented team under Matt Painter. Uh, they have lottery talent quotes at lottery talent uh two big men they had the shooting they had the table set up for them to go to a final four and they get pounded by the peacocks like I, matt painter how, how do you let that happen like i i this is not a serious program and like listen i i understand that it's like oh well hey like michigan state's not the only you know good team around in the big 10 like there's also michigan like and yeah, I'll, I'll have some fun with this. Sure, why not? Let, let's go off the cuff. We're, we're having a, a good Sunday here. Like, I, it, it spoke a lot of volumes over the banter over the weekend, right? That a preseason number six team with three McDonald's All Americans, top three recruiting class, uh, a big man that turned down the NBA, uh, a senior guard, gets to the Sweet 16 with no Big Ten title, no wins in the Big Ten tournament and not even 20 wins on the season, 
And that that was all celebrated louder than St. Peter's Sweet 16. The only difference is that Sweet 16 trip, <laughs> St. Peter's actually showed up to, uh, unlike uh, Michigan, who decided to spend their week cutting wrestling promos at their press conferences and only to miss about 12,000 layups against guys five inches shorter than them. But yeah, that was odd as well like that's really the expectation there for that program is that sweet 16s are fine no matter how we start the season and that's not just me just spewing like just go go with the free press reputation restored as michigan goes to sweet 16 <laughs> reputation restored oh yeah that's actually probably accurate because for the better part of my life uh, michigan has just been a mediocre at best basketball program and I can't think of more mediocre behavior than wanting to throw a parade for a Sweet 16 visit after entering the season top 10, three McDonald's All-Americans, a big man that comes back that is apparently spurning the NBA, a senior guard, and a, a coach that 100% was able to coach every game this season. Like, that's that's that's. Okay, yeah, re reputation restored. There we go. So, no, there's only one serious program that I think in the Big Ten, and that, that's Michigan State. And if they're not good in March, then who is in the Big Ten? I kid, but not really, to be honest, because I just, God, everyone step up, man. Like, this is, it's embarrassing, but it's also kind of funny. I can't lie. So, as we go in to another basketball offseason, uh, hey, we can just laugh at the rest of the Big Ten because, hey, Michigan State wasn't that good this year, but. Psh, Neither were any of you, even some of your best seasons, best teams in a generation. You guys still are completely embarrassing yourselves. Uh, so it's it's all fun. It's all fun. And I don't know any other way to handle it than just to look around and laugh. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm throwing stones in a glass house, but guess who else is in this glass house? All you. All of you. This Big, big Ten sucks, man. God, yeah, here I am just crapping on. Mountain West, the Pac-12, the WCC, and it's like, oh, oof, ugh, yikes. Whew. The Big Ten might as well move to California, too, at this rate. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, well, hey, that's the end of the show. Uh, yeah, yeah, Thanks for sticking around this long for all my rambling and all that fun stuff. Uh, hey, just come by tomorrow. Why not? We'll probably be answering a few more mailbag questions or if there's any other news coming from the Michigan State basketball program, football program, what have you. We're going to take care of it, guys. We're going to talk about it. We're going to banter about it. We're going to go into the offseason. So, hey, it's time for a lot of questions to be answered. If you have any uh, hypotheticals, if you have any uh, hard-hitting questions that you want to ask me, LockedOnSpartans at gmail.com. And before signing off, just want to thank you again for making Locked on Spartans your first listen every single day. Now go make your second listen, Locked on NFL Draft with Ryan Tracy, former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker. They bring the NFL Draft to life to you every single day. It's free. It's available where you get your podcast. Love you all. Go green.